All right, well, welcome to the uh, Bookmap educational course. Uh, this is going to be uh, a series here, uh, parts uh, one through four. Uh, we're going to go through part one today, uh, tomorrow part two, and then on Friday part three. Uh, and then next week we'll uh, do it again and then get to part four as well. Uh, which will be uh, about more advanced uh, features. Uh, today's uh, uh, course is going to be uh, Intro to Basic Market Mechanics, and uh, I hesitate to put the word basic in there. Uh, this is actually um, uh, it's essential to understand this information, uh, but it is uh, as well, uh, uh, actually gets uh, quite complex uh, uh, pretty pretty quickly, but uh, this, these are the mechanics that move the market, okay? So uh, we're going to go over this in, uh, in some detail uh, and then, um, uh, you know, show some, some examples in Bookmap uh, and um, uh, how you can uh, identify these. All right, risk disclaimer. Uh, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss is not suitable for all investors. Uh, past performance is not indicative of future results. Uh, for more information, you go to bookmap.com, become a member there, uh, and you'll have access to a lot of the free resources. Uh, and then um, uh, you can reach out to us uh, at support at uh, veloxpro.com or support at bookmap.com. Uh, and um, I want to show a few more resources here. Uh, so uh, here is our website. Uh, we also have uh, Twitter. You can follow us on Twitter. Uh, and then... Um, uh, we also have a YouTube page, uh, and uh, I'll reference this a uh, little bit later because there's a few videos I want to show you. Okay, and um, all right, let's move on. Okay, uh, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Bruce Pringle. I've been a trader for 10 years in a variety of markets. I'm a product specialist at Bookmap. I lead the uh, education uh, trading uh, here at Bookmap uh, and an expert uh, in order flow and market microstructure. Okay, I just showed the Twitter uh, and the uh, YouTube as well, so uh, uh, and support at bookmap.com. Right. Okay, so overall, uh, this series, the goals here, uh, what we're going to go through uh, in this educational course, okay, we're going to provide you a structure, uh, uh, structured understanding of today's markets. We're going to cover uh, theories, uh, and practical uses, uh, and we're going to give you something to take away and use. All right, so we're going to give some strategies and some setups, some training exercises, uh, and this is all uh, hopefully going to allow you to, uh, uh, the, with a, a high potential here, uh, to enhance your trading execution. All right, uh, this is going to be a reference guide for you to return to uh, if needed. Uh, you will always have it. Uh, and then during the, the daily webinars, we are going to uh, uh, cover this uh, in the live markets, okay? So you'll always have the course to come back to, but in the uh, live webinars, uh, we'll go over uh, current uh, uh, condition of the, uh, the live markets uh, using the same techniques used or learned from these courses. Okay, and we're also going to uh, introduce you to uh, advanced HFT or high frequency uh, trading concepts and applications. And this is both for futures and equities traders. Okay. All right, today's course, uh, what we're going to go through, we're going to start off with basic terminology. It's important to understand that, that we're all on the same page here. Uh, and then we're going to get into the uh, market mechanics and, and these mechanics visualized. Uh, why price moves, price sweeps, why price trend stops, uh, and price behavior, uh, how it moves. And then we're going to get into some of the training exercises later. Okay, who is this course for? Right, so uh, this is for uh, retail and professional traders alike, uh, prop traders, uh, dome or, or price ladder traders, uh, and uh, because we can show the historical limit order book and order flow, uh, this is also uh, appli applicable to swing traders uh, and spread traders, right? So uh, for the HFT environment, um, a lot of the quants and HFT algo traders uh, are especially going to um, uh, understand this uh, today's uh, lesson. Uh, but there is still a lot of good information in here uh, for uh, for the quants, uh, financial engineers, and students, uh, and this can also apply to uh, compliance officers. All right. So terminology, we're going to start off with liquidity. OK, 
Okay, and uh, we're talking about liquidity here, uh, obviously in the marketplaces. Uh, we're talking about the uh, the limit orders. Okay, the uh, the depth of the market, uh, where traders are lining up to be buyers or sellers. They're bidding and offering uh, in a market, and they're providing liquidity. They are making the market. Uh, without them, uh, uh, price would be uh, uh, very, very hard to define, okay? The BBO, okay, this is the best bid and offer, okay? That's uh, uh, the inside market, exactly where a price is currently trading. Uh, hitting the bid, okay? That's where uh, we're going to talk about um, uh, aggressive uh, volume uh, that uh, takes liquidity uh, off of the, uh, the best bid. Okay, someone hits the market sell button and they'll take liquidity. Lifting the offer, offer is the opposite. Uh, they'll hit the market buy button uh, and they will take liquidity off of the best offer. Okay, the LOB, the, the CLOB and the dome. Okay, limit order book, centralized limit order book and uh, depth of market. Okay, they're all basically the same thing. Uh, the, the CLOB is uh, kind of important to understand though because um, uh, the centralized limit order book uh, is the um, uh, really what we're talking about here uh, and, and, and taking the data from there uh, and then uh, transposing that onto the chart historically. All right, we're going to talk about uh, aggressor volume classification. Uh, that's the market buys and the market sells. Uh, the intent of trade, uh, that is the, the traders uh, lined up on the bid or the offer uh, in the depth of market. Okay. The current order book uh, is the current state of that order book right now. What's going on in the order book? The depth on the offer, the depth on the bid, uh, the um, um, best bid and offer, the last traded volume, uh, and, uh, and the spread. Okay. And then we're going to get in the historical limit order book uh, and uh, order flow. Uh, which uh, I'll, I'll define it, we'll, we'll see as we go on because we record all of this data uh, in that current order book and then uh, extrapolate that uh, and transpose it onto the historical chart. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, how, how can the order book and order flow data help you? Right. Well, uh, as I was just explaining, uh, the current state of the market, any dome will do this. All right. Uh, uh, there's no lag to it. Uh, it's showing you the liquidity at price levels. Uh, it's giving you the, uh, the best bid and offer and spread, uh, the current price and the last traded volume. It is the current state of the market. Okay. And then uh, it gives you an understanding of where price might go, uh, looking at uh, high liquidity uh, that you can target. That's going to be on the, on the uh, depth of market in the, on, the, on the bid or the offer. Okay. And this gives you an advantage over the competitors. Uh, you can start to understand their activity. Uh, recall that this is a zero-sum game uh, structure uh, within the marketplace, okay? And we're going to integrate this uh, information within the historical uh, limit order book uh, shortly, okay? So market mechanics, uh, the, um, we're going to go through some basic examples. Uh, and um, uh, now this, this uh, course uh, is about uh, education, okay? But we're going to show book map. Uh, and, uh, and why? Uh, that's because it visualizes uh, this uh, behavior uh, very, very uh, nicely. And, in fact, the story of Bookmap, uh, uh, we uh, uh, came from the HFT environment developing algos, uh, uh, trading in the uh, high frequency uh, uh, environment, and uh, needed uh, some sort of uh, visualization of where those trades were getting filled. Uh, and um, uh, software was developed uh, to understand that, uh, comprehend it, uh, and then uh, I thought that was a pretty good idea and that uh, led into uh, Bookmap becoming a product. Okay, So that's why we're going to be showing Bookmap here uh, is to visualize these mechanics and you'll see exactly what I mean in just a minute. Okay, So I need to show Bookmap, I need to go over it here. Uh, what are you looking at uh, in, uh, in the uh, user interface? Uh, this whole area here uh, is historical data, okay? Uh, here is your current data here, okay? This is uh, your uh, best bid and offer here, uh, your last traded volume here, uh, and you'll see that this is the depth of market 
Uh, I'm going to show you Bookmap uh, in just a moment here. But this is the live market is a graphical representation of the depth of market, okay, the current state uh, of that market. Right. So here's your, your best bid and offer here, uh, your depth on the uh, uh, offer and your depth here on the bid. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let me show you book map uh, and we'll get it up here. Okay. All right. Okay. So here's book map. We're looking at the S&P E-mini. Uh, and um, uh, let's see. Uh, I'll start off here and we'll just work. Uh, backwards very very simply okay I'm going to take off all of the uh, the data here uh, so that uh, we have something very very simple and straightforward to look at okay and indicators all right okay so most of us are uh, very in tune to un understanding a, um, a candlestick chart. Okay, so here it is in book map. All right, uh, and um, uh, no, no further explanation is needed. You can see that uh, between each vertical dotted line here, I have 15 minutes worth of data. Okay, I'm going to start layering information on top of this. Okay, first I'm going to add the best bid and offer. Okay, now what we're looking at is the historical best bid and offer. Okay, uh, we can, uh, let me zoom in a little bit here. Uh, and um, uh, so uh, you can see this move to the upside here. Well, this was the best bid and offer uh, within this uh, candlestick period. Okay, so this is a, a one minute chart. Uh, and um, uh, you can see the, um, uh, the, the closer of that uh, candlestick, but here's where the best bid and offer was during that time. Okay, the red line is the best offer. The, the green is the best bid. Okay, now let's add on some volume dots. Okay, so now what we're looking at here uh, is the volume traded uh, within uh, that best bid and offer. Okay, so this candlestick that you see here, this one minute candlestick chart, uh, well, you, you can see the, um, uh, where that volume took place. Uh, you can see the type of volume it was. I, it was uh, a lot of buying uh, that took place. Uh, and um, uh, you can see that we're giving you the overall delta of this information uh, as well. So uh, there was some selling in here, but uh, not as much. Uh, there was more buying. In fact, uh, I'm going to zoom in here to this area. I'm going to take a quick closer look here. So as I start to zoom in, um, we can really zoom down and, and show exactly uh, what unfolded in these markets. Okay, and we can see the algorithmic activity here at very sub-second levels. And we're down at the microsecond level here. Okay, all of this data is recorded, uh, but you can see as I zoom out, this just becomes a bigger green dot. Okay, and then you can see as I continue to zoom out, uh, we give you the overall delta because there's so many so many trades that took place here uh, that um, uh, we need to. Uh, uh, give we only have so much screen space uh, to give you something that is uh, useful so this this data is aggregated only visually or graphically okay and you can see now uh, what comprises this candlestick okay from the previous one here so this is very much like a footprint chart you can start to understand where the volume took place how much uh, what type uh, and um, uh, within uh, how much of a, a time period here. Okay, so that's the, uh, the traded volume. Uh, now we have that on the chart. Uh, and um, uh, now we're going to uh, add the uh, heat map here. Okay, so let's uh, add that. Okay, so now uh, what are we looking at here? Okay, well, all of this, this heat map uh, is... Um, uh, the historical limit order book. It's all derived here from the dome. Okay, so uh, as I was explaining earlier, uh, let's just go right back to this current market. Um, uh, this window here, uh, we're, we're giving a graphical representation of the liquidity in that limit order book. Okay, so like right here, we can see 1,347 contracts. Well, that that area is painted bright white in the current order book uh, window here. So we know right right away uh, there's a reference here, uh, very high liquidity uh, on the offer. 
Okay, so that's what the, uh, it's just a graphical representation of that limit order book. Now where this really gets interesting is that's the current market, this window here. Uh, but we, we take this data and we transpose it onto the historical chart. Okay, and let me zoom in just a little bit and you can start to understand the behavior of these traders here on the bid. Okay, look how they're adding and pulling liquidity in this area. Okay, so we can start to understand their intent to trade at some of these levels. Do they really want to be buyers or not? Okay, so that's the bookmap um, uh, interface in general, uh, and um, uh, we'll uh, we'll look more at it uh, a bit later. Uh, but um, uh, I do want to compare this to a dome, uh, just so you guys uh, uh, really uh, get this down. All right, so uh, here's, uh, here's our dome. We have our, our best uh, price here. Well, let's go through the price ladder here, as you can see in the dome, and here it is in book map. Okay, the depth of offer. Okay, here it is in the dome, these numeric values here, and you can see that those numeric values match up here uh, in, uh, in book map. Now, I also included the graphical representation of these numeric values here. Okay. That is the offer here on uh, in book map. Okay, here's the depth of bid. Okay, so this is the liquidity here uh, in the limit order book uh, in a dome, and then in book map. Okay, and then here's our inside market. All right, our level one data, our best bid and offer, our BBO. Okay, so we just have our best bid and offer, and you can see they match here uh, within the dome. Okay, and then finally our last traded volume. This number here uh, matches with the uh, uh, last price, uh, and uh, here's your last traded volume uh, with your last last price here. Okay, all right. So now uh, let's get into the um, uh, integration uh, of that current data. Okay, the uh, uh, going through the uh, or, um, order flow. Uh, data integration here, the current data, the real time uh, in the dome uh, is fleeting. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you'll see those numbers uh, display very quickly uh, and then they'll be redisplayed with uh, and refreshed with new data. So you'll have to remember uh, those areas uh, that may have been high liquidity or low liquidity. Uh, and um, and that can be a, a little, little challenging to do because you have to remember specific areas and then when price comes back to those areas, are they still bidding or offering? Do they sh still show interest? That's where the historical limit order book uh, and, and data comes in very, very um, uh, handy. Okay, so we record all that data uh, and then you can see and understand how we're looking at, at book map. Uh, we can understand how it unfolded in detail in specific areas. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's, it's very easy to see it, uh, and that gives us context uh, to those those areas as well. Okay, so like I like I mentioned, uh, let's say we have a double top pattern. Well, they were bidding there before, or or offering there before uh, with high liquidity, and if we return back to that area, are they still interested? We'll get context from understanding the auction in those areas. Okay, this gives you a nice advantage over your competition. All right, so now let's jump in here, uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, here's our historical dome, uh, our current dome in the book, uh, and then um, uh, here's our, our current dome in book map. Okay, and jump in here, and uh, why does price move? Okay, we're going to cover aggressor volume, okay, market transactions, and the intent of trade. Okay, the um, centralized limit order book auction. Okay, so why does price move? Okay, aggressor volume explained here. Uh, we're talking about the uh, the limit orders are they're passive. Uh, they sit or they rest uh, uh, within the uh, depth of market. Okay, they provide liquidity. They want to be buyers or sellers within those specific areas uh, on the price ladder. Okay, market orders. This is the aggressor. They cross the spread and they consume the liquidity on on the uh, in the depth of market. Okay, they'll consume the limit orders. Okay, so uh, most of us uh, are, are familiar with this, but this is the, the uh, classification of the volume that we'll be looking at here, is the aggressor classification, the market orders. Okay, the transaction, right? Uh, uh, 
uh, price trades uh, where this aggressor is matched with the liquidity uh, in the best bidder offer. Right, and then now let's start to jump in here and uh, we'll, we'll go through some examples, okay? Uh, here's current price uh, trading on the best bidder offer. Okay, here, uh, the last trade that just took place here was it was a market buy with a volume of one right here. Okay, now this is just illustration. Uh, we, we can see the spread here. Uh, we have the, uh, the liquidity uh, within the um, uh, best bid and offer here. We have 12 contracts on the offer. And uh, on the best bid, we have 16 contracts. Okay, this is where it last traded here. So that is the current price. Okay, now a very, very simple um, uh, market uh, uh, sell order. Okay, the aggressor hits the, uh, hits the bid uh, with a market sell order. Okay, they consume the liquidity here. So we, we did have uh, 16 contracts. Well, they consumed one. And now we have 15 contracts, and price has now changed. Price has moved, okay, one tick. Okay, this is how the market uh, uh, moves. Uh, the aggressor is the one that uh, that can move the market. Okay. Now here's an example of what that looks like in Bookmap. All right, you can see the um, the aggressor here. These little green dots here are market buys. Okay, and price was trading here uh, at uh, at 52.89. We're looking at oil. Okay, uh, and then you see the aggressor here. Uh, the market sells with the red dots on the best bid. Okay, so um, it's just going back and forth here. Now you can see uh, something pretty interesting already, uh, and you can see the complexity we're going to get into with just this very very simple binary example. Uh, we're recording here algorithmic activity. Okay. I mean, very, very clearly, you can see you can see the time uh, and the orders and the size of the orders are all equivalent here. So these these two algos are battling back and forth. Okay, uh, and you can start to understand uh, that uh, this this is really how these markets trade today. Okay, there's all these algorithms that are are trading uh, uh, back and forth, and we can understand their behavior here uh, within. Uh, uh, the historical limit order book, okay? All of that record, uh, which would be rather difficult to see in the dome, okay? Uh, here's another example uh, as well. Uh, and we're gonna see a lot of this kind of information uh, and data displayed uh, in book map. This is a, 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 an algo here uh, that is uh, uh, lifting the offer, but it's not really lifting price here, okay? It's trading uh, on the best offer. Okay, and you can see it's very, very clearly uh, with the the mechanical movement here, or of the buying and selling, uh, that uh, they they are consuming liquidity here, but they're not lifting price against them. Okay, so this is they're uh, accumulating a position here over time, uh, without moving price against them. Okay, so uh, now let's get into uh, next. Why does price move the imbalance? Uh, in the intent of trade, okay? So what we're gonna talk about here, large imbalances uh, in the order book, uh, that skews the auction, all right? Uh, now the size of these limit orders is gonna affect the best bid and the offer, all right? So uh, they may pull liquidity, uh, they may add liquidity, uh, you know, there might be a big spread. Uh, now, when the uh, a mechanic, mechanics here uh, operate uh, and you get our market sell order to move price, uh, it hits the bid, well we might see a big uh, move in that price uh, without um, uh, much volume. Uh, it's because they pulled their uh, liquidity, there was an imbalance, uh, and uh, uh, they, they, they pulled their liquidity on the, uh, on the bid and, um, and the transaction occurs at a, at a new lower price. Okay, let's go through the example, right? Here's our, our volume of one, okay? Uh, we, and, uh, and then they hit the bid here with another volume of one, right? So uh, 12 contracts, 16 here on the bid, one is consumed, that becomes the current price. Now, we have an imbalance here in the uh, depth of market on the, uh, on the offer, okay? You can see previously we had, uh, uh, you know, pretty equal uh, uh, book here. All right, uh, rather equal. I think there was a, a bit of a skew uh, in the uh, uh, on the bid side, but um, uh, we can see this is rather balanced. Right now, we have an imbalance. Okay, 
120 contracts versus it was 16, okay? 24 contracts and 32, they turned into 85 and 72. So we have a very heavy imbalance here uh, in, uh, in the limit order book, okay? Uh, they're they're uh, offering here with uh, a lot of uh, uh, with high contracts, okay? Big contract size. How that affects price, okay? Well, we can see here, these 15 and 18 contracts here on the bid, uh, these guys, they, they get scared. Uh, they don't want to, uh, to trade any longer at these levels, and they'll pull their liquidity, okay? So our last trade still occurred here uh, with that volume of one, okay? But the best bid has now uh, shifted down uh, a couple of ticks, okay? So now uh, we're down here uh, uh, two ticks uh, lower uh, at, uh, at 22 contracts. Okay, All right. So with a volume of one, okay, sell market volume of one, they've moved price now uh, uh, one, two, and three, three ticks here. Okay, we consume one um, contract here, and that becomes the current price. And this is how the intent of trade uh, can uh, uh, affect uh, and move price. Okay, uh, when in periods of high liquidity, you're going to see this all the time. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, or, or I'm sorry, of high vol volatility. Um, so uh, uh, fundamental uh, releases or economic data releases, uh, as well as just a, a skittish market, uh, there's a lot of volatility because there is a lack of liquidity. Uh, and in any imbalance uh, with high liquidity, uh, you'll, you'll see pushes and pulls of markets very quickly. Okay, and that's, this is what this looks like in book map. Okay, we have high liquidity here uh, that stays in the book, but we come up into this area here, uh, and they get very, very aggressive. We get an imbalance in that book. Okay, and you can see that how how it, how price uh, is affected here. Okay, uh, that uh, is 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 pushing price down uh, into uh, an area, and uh, you can see we're going to get very advanced about this. Uh, uh, we're talking about potential spoofing here uh, into uh, liquidity here on the bid, okay? But uh, the imbalance in that book, okay? So uh, advanced concepts, uh, the potential spoofing here, uh, imbalance to uh, drive price lower uh, and maybe get uh, uh, off uh, bids filled uh, in uh, at, at lower price levels, okay? Uh, there's also, uh, uh, you know, Strategies that uh, uh, you can, uh, and we're going to go over later, uh, with momentum, uh, looking for momentum, uh, or spoofing, uh, you can start to look for that, or layering, uh, icebergs uh, in ignition, ignition algos. All right, so let me cover uh, the ignition algo here. Uh, you can see the example uh, with the imbalance here uh, in, the, uh, in the limit order book on the offer. We see it once. They come in again. That algo is still working here. And then finally, you can see this one here, and it finally does drive price lower. Okay. So now we're going to start to understand and comprehend this data uh, within uh, uh, the historical chart, okay? because it's all recorded here. And you can see the... Um, you know, the you know we're not we're not talking about just uh, this is not just uh, uh, milliseconds of data. Uh, where, you know, this is tw uh, 10 seconds between each vertical dotted line here. Uh, you know, so we're looking at, um, uh, you know, like a minute here uh, of, uh, of price activity, a little bit more. Okay, but you're going to be able to utilize and consume that data uh, and look for, uh, uh, you know, uh, a potential uh, uh, order uh, uh, execution here uh, that's going to be enhanced. All right, here's another example. Uh, we have very high liquidity here on the um, best offer. It jumps into the book very quickly. Uh, and I'm going to show you a sequence here, okay? So we can also see them down here on the uh, on the bid uh, at this uh, 2420 level. Uh, and um, uh, let's, uh, how did this unfold, okay? So here, here that same action is here again. And we can start to see uh, how it affected price, okay? It affected price, it drove it lower. Uh, into uh, some of these lower areas here. Okay. And we're going we're gonna to talk about this concept um, uh, a bit later, but I'm going to introduce it. Uh, between short-term high liquidity, uh, skewing the auction, 
okay? And then longer term liquidity here that remains in the book, okay? So this longer term liquidity is already already understood by the auction, right? But this new information that jumps into these areas and then pulls, uh, it needs to be digested by the market, okay? And, and you can see that imbalance, that heavy imbalance has an effect on price. Here's another example. You can see this is the uh, the open uh, and um, uh, 9, 930 open here. Uh, we see an imbalance here driving up into high liquidity here, longer term high liquidity. Okay, it was uh, basically in the market uh, from the get-go of the 930 open. Uh, and then here's our imbalances with shorter term high liquidity, okay, driving price up into some of these areas. Okay, so next concept, let's go over sweeping of the order book. So what we're talking about here is just not moving price back and forth, we're trading through one or more price levels. Uh, this is an important concept to understand. Uh, this is typically how price trades into a new range. All right, and we're gonna witness this with a combination of uh, imbalance in the order book uh, and very sizable aggressive market orders. Okay. So here's an example. Uh, we'll start off again here. Here's our market uh, uh, buy with volume of one. But now uh, you can see here we have a market uh, sell with a volume of 50. Okay. So what occurs? They're hitting the bid with 50 contracts here. We have 15, 15 contracts uh, on, the, uh, on the best bid at this, at this point. Okay. Well, it sweeps through that 15. So uh, 15 trade. Uh, that is the um, uh, last uh, last trade that took place here uh, is still the current price. Uh, now, what what remains of that uh, 50 lot order? Well, it, it's still it's still a market sell, uh, but it already swept this price level, but it traded 15. So there are 35 contracts remaining uh, in that big uh, market sell order. Okay. So what what occurs? Uh, next price level still hitting the bid. Uh, it, it sweeps through uh, this price level here with the 18 contracts, right? And uh, and you can see we swept it, uh, and now there's 17 left still remaining in that 50 lot order, uh, and um, it, and it's still hitting the bid here, but we have 22 contracts here. Okay, so what unfolds? Right? Okay, it takes 17 of them, but there's still five five remaining. Okay, and that is our sweep of the book. Okay, uh, th this this uh, 50 lot now uh, is filled. Okay, and uh, and you can see we swept down uh, you know a few a few ticks here into lower levels. All right, uh, uh, important concept too. Uh, a lot of times, and it depends on the market. Um, uh, thinner markets, you'll see this uh, a lot more often. The ES, you'll rarely see this, but you can see the spread has widened out here. Right, because uh, they swept through all these levels here, but where's the best offer? Okay, it's still up here at, the, at this at this level with these 12 contracts. Okay, uh, so um, there's a vacuum here uh, within the. There's a bigger spread. The spread widens out between these two. Okay, a lot of times the ES though very very quickly will fill in. Right, what does that look like in bookmap? All right, well this is a fundamental release, uh, and um, uh, we can see the uh, uh, just uh, massive uh, uh, red dots here, uh, sweeping each price level as it goes lower. Okay, you can see the vacuum effect that we're talking about uh, as um, we return almost back to where we uh, dropped from here. Okay, here's another example, uh, and this is a uh, a market uh, uh, market buy. Okay, sweeping, uh, sweeping up to new levels. Okay, we see the, uh, this is the initial release. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, here's uh, at 10.30, this is oil. Uh, it's the um, oil inventories. Uh, actually, nothing really occurred for a few seconds, and then all of a sudden, they, they really uh, lifted the offer here. Okay. okay, let's look at some of the advanced concepts and some of the sweeping here. All right, uh, like for example, uh, looking for pullbacks. Uh, start to enter, if, you're, if you believe that uh, the sweep here uh, was, um, uh, we're gonna start to accept down to lower levels. Well, then you can start to enter some of your limit orders in some of these areas here, okay? For looking for that pullback, 
uh, into some of those areas because there's been a vacuum, right? Now guys, I see your, your questions here. I'm going to go through all the questions um, uh, later, uh, but um, uh, I want to I want to continue on and, and get through the presentation. Okay, so. Uh, you could also play momentum, uh, looking for that sweep and then joining in, uh, or uh, you, maybe you're looking for rejection, and I'm going to show an example of that. You're also going to see uh, book flipping. Uh, you might see sweeps into icebergs, uh, and then uh, those ignition algos as well. Okay. All right. So uh, here, here we are um, with an example uh, in uh, uh, oil again, and, and you can see uh, we swept down through uh, to a, a lower level here. And it looks like price is uh, starting to accept down below this le lower level here. Here's our pullback to it, and we get another continuation. All right, we actually see another sweep uh, to the upside. Okay, and it, and um, uh, this one uh, it sweeps up into uh, basically where it dropped from up here. Uh, but um, this one this is a little different here, and I'll, I'll explain in just a second. All right, uh, we see yet again uh, another sweep. Okay, price starts to accept above this level, and we sweep through it. We get our pullback here, and we sweep on down yet again. And we can see very nicely and cleanly we get our pullback right to where we drop from. So this concept of sweeping, although the mechanics look very simple, is very profound. Uh, you can start to see we're going to lead to a very nice setups uh, to understand, uh, looking for those vacuums, or maybe you want to join the... Um, uh, uh, momentum on the way up. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, we can start to uh, uh, look at some of these levels here and then also how they start to affect the volume profile. We're going to cover volume profile tomorrow, uh, but you can see as I drew a line across here, we're going to have our point of control up here uh, basically for this range. Whoops, sorry. Uh, and uh, and we, that's where we come up and test. Okay. Now the sweep down through this area here is going to be your low volume node. Okay, and you can see it here. And yet again, here's uh, where we swept down and broke from again here, and that is your low volume node here. So now you're going to start to understand the sweeping action and moving to lower levels or higher levels uh, within the volume profile. Okay. Now here's an example of um, a rejection. Okay. And um, uh, we can see that uh, this is again oil. Uh, that uh, we have a range uh, a situation uh, uh, developing here. We sweep down uh, into a lower level, uh, but we return right back into the range. Okay, so um, uh, you can uh, you can also play it that way. If uh, uh, this is a lot of the times, what you'll see in this kind of behavior are stop runs, uh, uh, getting traders uh, uh, you know stopped out, running the wrong way, maybe buying or or I'm sorry, selling the breakdown here. Uh, and then trading back into the range, and then you can see they actually traded to the opposite side here and uh, grab all the stops uh, on the other side. All right, so there's uh, the potential here uh, for understanding this and trading it uh, as rejection. Okay, here's the concept here uh, of a flip of the book. So here's our sweep, as you can see, uh, and then uh, here's the, the limit orders on the, on, on the bid here, okay? We swept through it, uh, and um, uh, yet uh, now, what do we return back to? Okay, we, you know, I, I actually, I would start to anticipate returning back to this level here, uh, but now we're starting to understand a flip of the book, because high liquidity here on the uh, on the bid has now flipped to the offer, and that's where we come back and test. All right, not only once, but twice and three times here. Okay, so you're going to start to extrapolate and understand this data within the historical limit order book chart. All right, so that's uh, sweeping. Let's get into uh, why price trend stops. We're going to go through absorption and exhaustion. Okay, absorption uh, is the limit orders that uh, that take up and absorb all the aggressive buying or selling. Okay, it could also be iceberg orders, but we're going to cover that in the advanced. Um, uh, session and uh, let's go through an example okay start off again with our, our market buy volume here of one uh, and um, uh, that's where current price is trading but there's a distinction here okay we have longer term high liquidity uh, down here in the depth uh, on the bid okay so 125 contracts 
uh, and um, uh, compared to uh, very very high compared to all the rest of the book. Okay. Now let's just uh, speed things up here. We sweep the book lower into some of these lower levels here. Uh, that 50 lot is, uh, uh, you know, there were 22 contracts here. It takes a 17. Now there are just five left, and that is the current price. Okay. So we still have. Now we're down at uh, uh, one tick away from our 125 uh, contracts. Okay. So they sweep it again here. Sell market order volume of 50. Okay. What happens? Okay. They hit the bid, those five trade, uh, and now we have a volume of 45 uh, trading into these 125 contracts. Okay. The 45 trade, now that becomes uh, 80 contracts here on the, uh, on the best bid. They absorbed all of those contracts, uh, or those 45, okay, from that, uh, that 50 lot. Okay. They hit it again here. Okay. Market sell with a volume of 50 what unfolds okay so hitting the bid we have 80 contracts here okay 50 of them trade and now there are 30 left they absorbed all of that um, uh, order at one price level okay uh, and um, uh, so now they, this this one trader or let's say it's one actor one trader uh, they um, they came into the market very aggressively with 150 contracts one swept the book lower uh, one uh, swept the book just one price level and then was absorbed and then that last uh, 50 lot was completely absorbed uh, at that price level okay and uh, there are 30 contracts still remaining at that price level okay so let's say someone jumps in now uh, and uh, with a market buy volume of just one okay well uh, if there if the spread is still uh, had widened out after that sweep uh, and remains that condition just with a volume of one, uh, they've moved the price up three ticks. All right, so uh, this can allude to a lot of different things. We can start to understand trapped volume in some of these areas, uh, or you know maybe uh, you're trading in down into an iceberg order uh, here on the um, on the best bid. Okay, all right, so. Uh, as mentioned, uh, the aggressive buyer lifts uh, lifts price or lifts the offer uh, with just one contract, and that becomes they take one liquidity, one contract of the liquidity off of the twelve here, uh, and that now becomes the current price. Okay, uh, and um, uh, let's go through the example here uh, in Bookmap. What does this look like? Okay, here's our high liquidity here uh, on the offer. Okay. Uh, we see the aggressive market buys uh, trading into that area, and they remain in the book. Okay? These guys up here at 44.20, they want to, to be sellers. And you can see they continue to, the aggressive market buys, uh, continue to trade into that area. Uh, and they, and the, the um, uh, limit orders on the offer absorb all of that aggressive buying. Right. It, it finally dries up here, uh, and then you can see that they, they very aggressively uh, then um, uh, hit the bid uh, with uh, large market sell orders. Uh, we trade below that level. Interestingly enough, just like the sweep, uh, we, we trade now below at, at a new level here. Okay. And you can see some uh, same, same concept here uh, down on the bid. Uh, they're, they're starting to absorb it down here, but they actually uh, overpower the uh, limit um, uh, buys here uh, and they sweep through that level okay but this is the absorption part up here okay another example uh, trading into high liquidity here uh, you can see the uh, aggressive um, uh, market sells uh, taking place here on the best bid uh, and they just don't take it any lower okay so any of that uh, aggressive uh, selling has been absorbed uh, and uh, and then we can see the uh, uh, price, uh, they start to lift the offer with uh, aggressive market buying. Uh, liquidity pulls here, uh, and we continue on up. Okay, let's go through a few advanced concepts. Uh, v bottoms, uh, V bottom reversals, uh, pullback strategy that we covered earlier. Uh, you can look for stop runs, trap volume, and book flipping as well. Uh, and um, uh, let's take a look. Right. Well, uh, here's our sweep down to the bottom. Uh, and then you can see, look at how they uh, uh, very aggressively come in here. This is uh, this is gold, uh, and they come in here with 149 contracts uh, at this price level here of uh, um, at 1244 and a half, uh, and um, and they remain in the book. Okay, 
the uh, uh, you would maybe start to anticipate a move back to where it broke from. But this information here, uh, understanding the depth of the uh, of the market, uh, uh, gives you that insight uh, that uh, uh, we're not going uh, uh, back up to here because these guys want to be uh, sellers at a lower level. All right. Uh, here's an example in Apple. Uh, you know, we um, uh, Bookmap is also available for uh, for equities in the U.S. Uh, and let's go through this a uh, really nice example here uh, of absorption. Okay, uh, you can see the aggressive selling uh, into some of these areas here, and uh, finally down here uh, we see um, uh, 2,557 contracts trade uh, on the um, uh, best bid. And you can see it's all selling here. Okay, in our in our profile, right? And you can see all of the selling here. Look at the buying here. There's very little, right? Completely absorbed by the larger traders uh, with their limit orders. Okay, uh, and this is going to be our um, uh, example with the V bottom here. But uh, uh, the um, uh, all absorbed here, we do actually get that retest, uh, but we don't go all the way down to the to the bottom. We get we can start to anticipate those retests uh, to um, uh, maybe where we start to see some buying come back in, right? Uh, and uh, and this is what it looks like on the higher time frame. Okay, so a, a real uh, very quick sharp drop uh, into an area here uh, on the um, uh, uh, on the bid, completely absorbed, and you can see the reaction that it had in the V bottom. Okay, all right. So uh, that's it with the um, absorption. Let's go over exhaustion. Okay, what is it? It's the lack of aggressive volume activity. Okay, so um, uh, you can see here, uh, we're going to go through uh, the market, uh, um, the buy market order here, volume of 50. Okay, uh, and uh, that had already occurred, so we still have 12 contracts here, and that is the current price. Okay, on the best offer. Okay, now they the they they come in and they sweep the book lower lower here. Uh, 15 contracts, uh, and uh, and then um, uh, and then 13, uh, and then uh, there's they're still hitting the uh, uh, hitting the bid here. Uh, now we have a, a a sell market order volume of five uh, occurs here into these 10 contracts. Uh, I do need to um, uh, just uh, uh, mention here. Look at the uh, lack of now. It doesn't have to be a lack of liquidity uh, for it to be exhaustion. It's a lack of aggressor uh, of volume uh, that makes it exhaustion. Uh, but a lot of times you won't see very high liquidity. Right? So uh, we come down into, uh, and now we're hitting the bid with five contracts uh, into 10 on the, on, the, uh, on the bid. So it trades those five, uh, and, and you can see that uh, becomes now the current price. Okay? Next example, they, they uh, continue to um, uh, hit the bid. We have another. Um, a cell here of five, what occurs? Well, they sweep that level, okay? That's your last traded volume. Now we're trading down here on the best bid into these eight contracts, all right? Uh, but uh, th that's it. Uh, there's uh, there's no more um, uh, buying. Uh, there's a lack of, uh, you can see that uh, it started off as pretty big, uh, but um, it started to dry up in some of these lower levels here. And uh, instead, now uh, they don't uh, come down and test the uh, the best bid here. These eight contracts, uh, and instead uh, they um, uh, market buy uh, with a volume of five, um, uh, lifts the offer into these ten contracts here, and th that becomes the current price. Okay. All right. And this is what it looks like in Bookmap, and you're going to see this all over the place in Bookmap. All right. Uh, you're going to we we can see we come down into an area, and they're pulling liquidity. Uh, in this area here, but look at the uh, the the aggressor. Okay, there's no no trades that took place here, here, here. Uh, we finally get uh, a little bit of uh, market sell uh, here, uh, but we test a little bit lower, and there's complete lack of trading, uh, one tick lower. Okay, well we we rotate back up, we come back down again, and complete lack of trading. No one's interested in trading at this level. Okay, so the the mechanics here are that uh, uh, if no one uh, wishes to trade at this level, well, price is going to trade higher. Right? It's going to look for a liquidity now 
uh, on the uh, on the best offer. Okay, now it's looking for uh, uh, for sellers, and where are the sellers? Well, they're they're up in some of these areas, but they're you can see them pulling their liquidity. All right. All right. Uh, as mentioned, uh, uh, a lot of times what you get uh, with this uh, uh, absence of uh, the aggressor uh, is um, uh, in these trending markets, uh, you'll see the uh, pullbacks uh, and you'll see very little um, uh, aggressor uh, volume uh, take place at, at some of these areas. Okay, so you can see a complete lack of, uh, uh, we have one, two, three, four basically tests here. Uh, in, uh, into this uh, this price level in gold, uh, and uh, and and no selling. Okay, so we rotate back up, and we actually sweep the book one higher. We get a, a minor pullback here, uh, and uh, and you can see there's there's no one interested in selling. Okay, there's the sellers are out of the market basically. Right, we can also see look at the limit order book here. We see an, a skew in that auction. So where do we come back up into? Okay, we trade back up into the. It's searching for that high liquidity on the. Uh, uh, on the best offer, and we start to trade into that area. We get a pullback again, and we can see lack of uh, aggressive selling. All right, another sweep, uh, and then uh, and then you can see we get the nice pullback here, but uh, a lack of lack of selling. All right, so uh, uh, start to uh, to piece these together into uh, some strategies looking for exhaustion points after a sweep. All right. Okay, um, advanced uh, concepts here, uh, starting to understand that lack of activity. Uh, well, uh, one concept I just wanted to uh, to go over here uh, was uh, it 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 doesn't necessarily mean the uh, that there's uh, a lack of high liquidity. Okay, that may exist. Right, and this in this example it does, and that it looks like they're starting to absorb it uh, here, but then there's just a lack of uh, uh, aggressive buying. Right, we get one, two, three tests here, uh, and uh, no interest at all. Uh, we start to rotate lower. Okay, and I also want to integrate this into the bigger picture, since we're looking at um, you know microstructural stuff here. Uh, in the bigger picture, uh, this is what occurred. Right, uh, we uh, we can see the aggressive um, uh, behavior with the uh, limit order book, uh, wanting to uh, offer at a lower price. And then uh, no one's willing to really take them on in these areas here. All right. Okay. And again, that same concept of um, uh, you can see there's a little bit of uh, trading uh, that takes place here, but look at the overall. All right. As we sweep higher here uh, into a, a new price level, uh, and uh, there's just a very very little um, uh, aggressive selling compared to the aggressive buying. Okay. A lot more green dots here. All right. Some sideways action here, but now you start to see in the trending areas, a uh, lot of green dots up in these areas, very little trading here uh, on the pullbacks. Okay, And you can see the trending environment higher. And where do we go? Searching for high liquidity that you find here on the, uh, uh, on the best offer. Okay. All right. So uh, that's some of the basic uh, market mechanics. Uh, but... Um, and this is essential stuff to understand, uh, but we also want to integrate into this how it, uh, not just why it's moving uh, or stopping, but how, okay? So uh, the volatility, the depth of liquidity, uh, thinner markets versus thicker markets, right? Thinner markets like gold, for example, uh, you're going to see a lot of volatility. You're going to see a lot of price movement backwards and forwards because there is a lack of liquidity. Right, thicker markets like the S&P or the bonds are going to be slower moving, uh, and you're going to see a lot of pullbacks and re retracements back to areas where they broke from. Okay, start to comprehend uh, the behavior of the price movement, uh, and uh, you're really going to gain a lot of insight uh, with some of these basic mechanics. Okay, looking for flurries of activity. Okay, within the auction uh, uh, or, or the volume or within time cycles like the S&P cash open, okay, or in the NASDAQ as well. Uh, start to understand the speed of the markets. Uh, how quickly is that occurring? Uh, or was it a slow movement that took place? Okay, it's going to give a lot of insight to some of these basic mechanics. All right, uh, yeah, the uh, fast, slow, retest, uh, liquidity shifts, etc. Each market 
uh, has its own unique characteristics, but these basic mechanics are all the same. All right, so let's end up here uh, and um, uh, part one, some of the training exercises. Okay, so go back and start to identify these basic market mechanics okay, that we just covered. Uh, and um, uh, start to mark up uh, your charts. Uh, the more the better. Okay, uh, Look for the variations in how price moved within these examples. Okay, You can uh, consider using the bookmap replay mode. Uh, is an excellent way of, uh, of seeing this data. You can replay it again and again within that replay file. Uh, and then you can start to draw your own conclusions from these examples, okay? noting the different times, the different markets, the varying liquidity, uh, the speed that it moves, et cetera. All right. Uh, so um, uh, once you start to comprehend that, uh, you can start to anticipate these kinds of mechanics occurring in real time. Okay. So understanding these basic market mechanics are critical. Okay. This will lay the foundation for the next uh, uh, few uh, few lessons that we're going to cover. All right. Okay. Uh, so. Um, uh, tomorrow, uh, what we're going to go through in part two is we're going to uh, take a step back and look into the bigger picture uh, historically and start to understand order flow within structures, okay, microstructure uh, and even uh, uh, maybe a, a, bit, a bit bigger, okay. And we're going we're gonna to go over auction theory and, uh, and volume profile, all right. Okay, uh, let me get to your questions uh, and then uh, we'll wrap it up and, uh, and call it a day. Okay. Yes, it's being recorded. Uh, recording will be up on the uh, YouTube page. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, algorithmic uh, activity, uh, Michael, no. Uh, it's not all aggressive um, uh, market orders. Uh, but that example I showed, uh, that very basic example of uh, accumulation uh, is clearly an algo. Okay? But uh, most, most of the algos are, um, you see um, uh, shifts in liquidity in that limit order book. Uh, but uh, it can be a combination as well. All right. Yes, RR, what this is recorded. Um, Is the sweep in the book uh, a stop run? It could be, uh, but not necessarily whatsoever. Uh, and we're going to go over that a, a bit more tomorrow within um, some of the structures, okay, looking at microstructures, okay. Ashton, you're talking about uh, looking for a pause. Um, Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you're going to start to, you're going to notice uh, uh, that, you know, let's say you, you get, you see a very aggressive sweep uh, down into an area. Uh, well, we're going to cover it uh, more in the setups, uh, starting to understand uh, that aggressive sweep. Uh, did it auction correctly on the way down uh, or way up? Uh, and uh, if that is the case, it will lead to, you know, um, you know, higher probability of, uh, of, you know, looking for exhaustion on the way back up. Um, and um, uh, yeah, and then that, that's where you can be, you know, starting to place your uh, your limit orders. Uh, Gunther, um, uh, no um, uh, FX futures uh, book map will work with, but not forex. Okay, not the spot market. The reason being is there's no centralized limit order book. Okay. Uh, when exhaustion becomes uh, induction to the opposite side, um, well, not not really. Um, you know, I mean, it, the it, exhaustion is just the lack lack of uh, activity. Uh, so uh, uh, the market needs a liquidity and uh, and the aggressor uh, to trade uh, to be matched uh, for that to take place. Uh, Maurice, um, uh, yeah, we um, uh, no 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 uh, thinkorswim platform at the moment. 
uh, Ashton, yeah, I'm sorry, the, you, you won't see the other, this is GoToWebinar, you don't see the other people's questions here. Uh, let's see, John. Um, yeah, the, the dots uh, in Bookmap are the, um, that's the aggressor, right? They're taking liquidity. Okay. Yeah, Afshin. Um, uh, well, I mean, uh, you read that sweep. You know, uh, understand that sweep and how it's auctioning, uh, and then uh, and then start to anticipate. And and like again, like uh, go go through the exercises here. Uh, you know, to uh, uh, see it again and again uh, in uh, in replay mode potentially here, uh, and then uh, you'll start to get an understanding of, of what you're exactly what you're looking for. You'll be an expert at it. All right. Uh, absolutely, Maurice. This is uh, uh, something um, uh, Maurice is asking about swing trading uh, and uh, finding volatility uh, for option trades as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. This this is what uh, is is distinct and, and um, uh, unique here uh, is that uh, now with the historical limit order book. Uh, let me take the candlesticks off here. Okay, so let's look at the, the S and P right now. Okay. Well, you can start to understand, uh, uh, you know, in, it, because it's all recorded, uh, even for swing traders, uh, very easily, uh, you can start to um, incorporate this into your uh, your trading. I mean, you look at how we came down into, and, the, and we see the buying interest down here on the bid, uh, and then where did it come up to? Okay. Well, you can start to target these areas, start to understand these areas of high liquidity here at, uh, at 2430 in the S&P. Right. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Afshin, more about exhaustion. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm not. I mean, okay. So uh, exhaustion. Let's just take a look at the current market. Right. Uh, and. Um, uh, here, let's look at some of this trending action. Okay, so um, the uh, uh, look, look at the this. I mean, it's not you know these these areas here. Uh, I mean, it's not complete exhaustion, but look at the amount of trading compared uh, to the higher highs. Okay, these are higher lows. Okay, sweeps up. Okay, and this is you know we see it every day, right? Uh, we see a sweep up and a return back here, and we see a lack of uh, a selling activity. Uh, look at look at uh, the overall buying here uh, in this area, uh, and it, we we can see that it's uptrending. We see uh, more volume in green, uh, aggressive buying uh, at higher highs. On the pullbacks, we see very little volume uh, of aggressive sells. Okay, uh, it it might be complete exhaustion. This is complete exhaustion here. We see nothing that traded here. Uh, but look at some of these other little areas here. There's very little here. It, it exhausted here. We got a retest though, uh, and um, uh, we can see the uh, uh, there's just really a lack of uh, of selling activity. All right. Okay. All right. A few more questions here, and then let's wrap it up. Um, Uh, Maurice, if you're talking about, uh, you know, you're talking about the Greeks in um, uh, in options, uh, and um, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, how those are going to be valued uh, in your, um, uh, you know, looking at your your IV, uh, for example. Okay, uh, that that's 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 something a little different, right? But uh, you, I mean, you, you, I think this is you're still going to see this the same type of behavior here. Uh, and um, uh, I don't know if the um, uh, IV is going to go down on some of these pullbacks, right? Uh, potentially, but uh, maybe not, right? So it's a derivative, and that's that's a little little more challenging. Uh, there's another layer of information there. Okay. 
All right, and let me see here. Just a few more questions, and we'll call it a day. Uh, well, uh, Afshin, okay, so here's an example of a sweep of, of the book here uh, to the, uh, you know, in the S&P. Uh, you're talking about this 1030 area. Um, very aggressive. It actually starts right here, uh, and there's a little bit of, of selling in some of these areas, but look at the majority, right? Uh, and um, uh, this was uh, so aggressive uh, and, and such a, a quick charge up. Uh, well, you know, there's there's a complete lack of uh, of interest here. We're starting to look at. You can start to see a book flip here as well. Uh, start to materialize. Uh, they're they're buying here on the. Uh, they want to be buyers here on the bid. Uh, but um, uh, this was aggressive enough that we don't even get a retest of the area. Okay, so we just have a a, a higher trading range up here, right? Uh, so that's that's how you're going to have to start to comprehend by looking at your examples and studying and understand like um, uh, you know uh, you do, you don't get that pullback, right? Look at this look at this sweep here uh, to the higher side. Uh, you can start to understand that uh, well this wasn't as aggressive, right? It didn't take um, uh, as many ticks uh, to the upside here. We get a pullback to where we actually broke from here, right? So uh, that's uh, that's how it's going to help. Uh, but uh, you're going to have to, you know, start to put those pieces together yourself. Uh, you know, we're covering the market uh, basics here, uh, and then uh, we will uh, go over more uh, in uh, uh, later in uh, some of the other uh, uh, educational sessions. Oh, SJ, I mean, uh, on average, what's the the approximate monthly return using bookmap I mean that's gonna vary uh, you know tremendously uh, different trades uh, traders different styles of trading um, you know they might be trading once or twice a day or they might be trading like hundreds of times a day or thousands of times a day yeah action the, the stocks uh, are um, uh, look a little different uh, there's a lot less liquidity uh, for the most part uh, compared to the futures all right, guys. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for coming. Uh, and um, tomorrow we're going to go through uh, part two and um, uh, just uh, that review again here. Uh, part two is going to, we're, we're going to look at some of the microstructures uh, and the same market uh, mechanics within the, uh, the structures, right? And we're going to start to get into auction theory and volume profile within the order flow, okay? All right. All right, guys. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. All right. I uh, hope it was helpful. Uh, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Take care.